Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us on this call today. I'm um, just going to get right into it. If you have questions for either Chael Sonnen or Scott Coker, press star one on your telephone. Uh, at this point, I'm going to open it up for uh, Scott Coker to give some opening remarks. Scott? Hey, um, I'd like to thank the media uh, for calling in. Uh, hello from Budapest. Uh, I'd like to say this is another ma a major signing for us. Uh, Chael Sonnen um, has been a fighter that I've been a big fan of his uh, his whole career, and I'm excited to have him on board uh, with Bellator and the with the fights and the roster that we have together. Uh, we could create some uh, amazing matchups for him. Um, but before we go into uh, the questions for Chael and myself, I'd like to um, uh, let everybody know that on December 2nd we have a a uh, matchup between A.J. McKee and Emmanuel Sanchez. They'll be going on to the Windstar Casino just outside of Dallas. And uh, the tickets will go on sale for, on the, uh, tickets will go on sale for that event this Monday. And uh, don't forget, tonight on Spike TV at 9 p.m., 8 p.m. Central, we're back with Bellator 161 from Austin, Texas, featuring Czech Congo and Tony Johnson. Uh, and the next week, uh, we have kickboxing returns on Spike from Budapest, Hungary, with some world-class kickboxing and that's at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern as well. Uh, without further delay, I just open up for the questions uh, for Chael and myself. Okay. At this time, you, oh my God, you have a question from the line of Steve Wan from MMA Mania. Your Hi. Line. My, my first question is for Chael. We've read in a previous interview that you no longer have a business relationship with UFC. Is it safe to assume you also no longer have one with World Series of Fighting? Uh, the World Series of Fighting, I do, um, uh, just purely as a commentator. Uh, but that's accurate. Uh, I, I do not have a relationship with the UFC. That's true. All right. Well, it's also been stated that you plan to have your first fight in November. If it works out, do you have an opponent in mind? No, I don't have an opponent. I'm hoping they book two, man. I, I don't know. I I'm on a legend's ass kicking tour, and I, I hope they book two guys because one of them's going to pull out. And I all I can tell you is, as for myself, no matter what happens, I will make that walk when my music hits those speakers. Anybody, anytime, at any weight class, and that isn't bravado or tough guy talk. I've just had it, man. I thought my I thought my race was ran. I wrote the book on this thing, and I can tell that there's a couple of chapters left. I, I keep watching these guys, and, and it's like Marshall Mathers said. They might walk like me and talk like me, dress, act, not give a dang like me, and they just might be the next best thing, but they are not quite me. And I'm watching these guys, and they're talking about money and who their opponents are and their weight class, and if this happens, who cares about all that stuff? You either want to fight or you don't. And, and one of my main motivations for coming back is pure anger. I sit back as a fan. I watch these guys squibble and squabble. It's got nothing about this. I put this deal together uh, with Coker over three phone calls. I didn't negotiate. I didn't ask for anything. I want an opportunity to fight. That was it. And he'll tell you the same thing. It was as simple as that. Well, speaking of that opportunity, I've heard that you want to fight in three different weight classes, but light heavyweight will be your home. What is your plan then for your first fight? Is it light heavyweight? I'd like to go at light heavyweight. I've been uh, mentally preparing uh, to compete, and I was thinking about going into the middleweight division. I think uh, with the change of being over in Bellator, and I'm just looking at the lineup, I'm looking at the guys that they have. Uh, I just, I just think 205 is the place to be for right now. That that can change overnight. I, Rory McDonald got signed, one of the best talents out there. He did an interview talking about he wants to go up to 185. He's going to need some opponents. Uh, I personally believe uh, that Fedor is on his way to Bellator. I've heard these rumblings, usually in this business where there's smoke, there's fire. I don't think he's coming to 205, so there's an opportunity at heavyweight. But I fight a gangster weight. What? Get on the scale, whatever it says, man. You either want to fight or you don't, and I do. Well, we look forward to seeing the American Gangster fight at Gangster Way. Thanks, Chael. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you, my friend. Your next question comes from the line of Chamatkar Sanadu. Your line is live. Thanks. Uh, first of all, Chael, congratulations on the deal. Um, how many fights did you have left on your UFC contract? I was not under contract with UFC when I signed with Bellator. Okay. Um, so was it just a matter of asking Dana White for a release in negotiations, or were you absolutely free to talk to anybody you wanted to? 
Yeah, I was not under contract with UFC in, in any fashion when I signed with Bellator. That that was a that was that I read I read that as well online, and that that is not accurate. Okay, I mean, I guess what's been your reaction to the reaction from the MMA community, fans, media, fellow fighters, to you signing with Bellator today? It's fun, man. I mean, a big part of this thing, look, it's staying in shape. A lot of it is my social club. Some guys got hobbies. They go play golf and walk around on the beach and do these. We don't have those things in Oregon. We got a, we got a whole bunch of rain, and I don't know how to play golf. So I go to the gym every day just because that's my chance to visit with guys and have friends and, and keep up on the loop. And, you know, as far as the reaction goes, Bellator is awesome. I'm a huge fan. I've been a, I've been a fan uh, from the very beginning. The one that really won me over, if you really want to know, is when Ken Shamrock walked out, and before he walked out, Animal from the Road Warriors busted onto the stage. That was really the moment where I said, look, I, I want to make that walk. I want to make that walk. I was jealous. I, w- I was jealous of Shamrock's entrance. I was jealous of the whole thing. And that will probably surprise Ken that I was jealous of him, but that was a moment in time that I remember and thought, that's going to be me someday. Well, I mean, if you were jealous of that, do you have any kind of pro wrestling friends that you'd like to kind of help you make the walk down the aisle? You know, let's let's see what city we, we end up in. I'm I'm always pushing for California, uh, just because I know they do a lot of shows in California. It's a close it's a close trip, um, but let's see what happens. I I, I mean, I, I believe that entertainment's a big part of this. It's I like to go out there and compete because it's the only sport I know. I was an amateur wrestler. I used to work so hard and two two workouts a day and cutting weight and just doing this whole thing while trying to go through school and. Uh, you know, have a have a normal life, and we go compete, and there'd be nobody there but my mom and dad, and then my teammates' mom and dad. And when I got into MMA, all of a sudden, you're doing the same thing, but your hard work is also feeding your ego. People are watching, people are tuning in, and yeah, you know, that's a part of it that Bellator's embrace. You can go look at the ratings and look at the numbers, uh, you know, that are going through the roof. As much people are, are talking about me, people are pumped about uh, Congo and Johnson, which is going down tonight. Uh, which I'm going to have a hand in, by the way. So make sure you're tuning in, live and free, and only on Spike. <laughs> how many uh, how many fights have you signed on for, Chael? I really don't know. I've got uh, that is signed, and I couldn't tell you the number. It's multi fight and it's multi uh, year. I believe it's a three year six fight deal. I could be wrong on that, so Coker corrects me. Don't don't make me a liar here, but. I'm in for the long run, man. I, I, I will fight as soon as I possibly can. There's a card tonight, and I'm pissed off that I'm not on it. Um, Scott, could you weigh in on that? Could you just confirm how many fights Chelsea signed on for? Yeah, you know what? Um, I, I really can't talk about you know the details, but uh, Chell is pretty close. Okay. Um, Chell, so of all the opponents, why did uh, Tito Ortiz kind of go at number one in your list there? Yeah, somebody else suggested Tito to me, and as soon as they did, I thought, man, that that makes a lot of sense. Look, Tito's Tito's a legend. Tito's great. Tito's even a friend of mine. But uh, the bottom line is, he's been around, and I was jealous for a long time. You know, jealousy is a hell of a thing. There's a reason it's one of the deadly sins. When, when I was out slugging out and trying to get my my shot, Tito was on TV and having the the crowd cheer and doing the appearances and just doing all these things that that I fantasized and wanted to do. And there was really never an opportunity uh, to go against them. We were in the same division in college, same weight class, uh, same conference. I'd I'd see him around at the events. I still see him around at the events. But he looks at me the same way I look at him. I look at him like, Tito, you know I could whip your ass. And he gives me that exact same look. Every time we're in the same room together, it's like this big alpha male contest. And he knows what's going on, and I know I know what's going on. So if the bad boy wants a piece of the bad guy, all you got to do is say my name. I've said his name. All he has to do is say mine. And Your next question comes from the line of Ken Pishna. Your line is live. Ken Pishna? What, they'll just let anybody on these calls. No, man. It's unbelievable, isn't it? What's happening, buddy? <laughs> Not much. How you doing, Chael? Good, man. Nice to hear your voice. Hey, you too. Um, first of all, congratulations. But uh, I'd, I'd really have, like couldn't to know... have happened to a better guy, Ken. Could not have happened to a better guy. Couldn't have. Couldn't have. Just ask Lance. That's right. Um, 
you know, when when uh, the whole thing went down with the suspension and everything, uh, when you were under the UFC banner, for a long time you said, you know, I don't think I'll ever be back. I'm done. I'm done. When did it really click for you that you weren't done, that you still had the fire and you wanted to come back? Yeah, well, you, th- those fires go in and out. And, and I was always told over time, I, I came as a boxing fan. I, I was a boxing fan before I was anything else. My dad told me, I was a wrestler myself, but my dad had told me, that nothing beats a boxer. He told me this when I was a kid, and I believed it. And it was before mixed martial arts and everything, and we, we came up to the Sugar Ray Leonard was my favorite fighter, but the Duran, the Hagler, the Hearn, the true four horsemen era. And when I heard people say when that fire goes out, you can never get it back, I believed it. And I thought my race was ran. I was going to just move to the other side of the apron, put on a suit, talk about the fights. It was a nice opportunity. And I sat back, man, and it, it, it was a thing of anger. It was the same as when I was a 21-year-old kid trying to break into this business. I sit back, and I'm watching these guys, and I'm watching them squabble about who they're going to fight and what weight class. And uh, they sign a deal, and then all of a sudden something comes, and they want more money, and they want to renegotiate. Man, a deal is a deal. If you, There's good deals and there's bad deals, but once you make a deal, you have a deal. I would never try to renegotiate. Never. I took coconut right now. My His phone will never ring with me with my hand out asking for anything regardless of what the opportunity is. So, you know, I'm watching these guys, and I was just getting mad. I was getting mad just like uh, when I used to sit back back in the pride days, and I'd be watching these guys on TV and go, man, I will kick that guy's ass right now, but i got to get my opportunity. And I just had enough. You know, I'm living through it with George St. Pierre. He's dangling his carrot. Is he going to come back? Man, George, you either want to fight or you don't. I was talking to George earlier today. We're good friends. The bottom line is you either want to do it or you don't. It's as simple as that. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Now, um, when you when you uh, started your kind of your comeback trail, you, you had to enter the USADA testing pool, or you did enter the USADA testing pool. Um, and after your first test, you said that you were basically clean. Can you Pretty kind of much. explain what that meant? Basically. I mean, we don't, we're not going to get to a hundred. We're not going to get to a hundred percent, right? Like I want to be judged on a okay. okay, This is a bit, I'm kidding. But yes, everything was fine. They tested me at least four times. Could have been more. Uh, I think four was the number. Yeah, there was no problem there. Now, considering your past medical history, do you foresee any issues as far as drug testing goes if you compete in Nevada, California, New Jersey, the more stringent states? No, I'm on the I'm on the other side of the tracks now, and it, it is different. You know, some guys will use some of those things and then go, "Well, it, it didn't it enhance me; it helped with recovery." It did with me. I I got an enhancement. I felt better. Period. I needed less sleep at night. I had more energy. The recovery thing that that's true too. It was absolutely an enhancer. I got asked that by people. Hey, did you ever take anything that was an enhancer? I didn't ever took anything that wasn't an enhancer. That's all I was. That's the only reason I would take something if I thought it would enhance me. But I'm on the other side now, and they're they're still testing. There's commissions. If we go fight in California, which is what I'm lobbying for, Andy Foster's as strict as that. He is number one. There is nobody stricter, and he will bring in USADA. So if people are married to those letters. They're probably going to have it. That that's up to him. I'm not speaking for him, but I've watched him in the past. Foster follows he follows water. He brings in Usadi. He does their own commission. I'm on the other side. I'm on the other side of it now. Your next question comes from the line of Stephen Morocco. Your line is live. Hey, on that topic, question for Scott: Is there a uh, have there been any talks about hiring an independent firm to? Uh, do drug testing for Bellator year-round, or is that something that's going to stick with the uh, state, of, state athletic commissions for the time being? You know, um, our policy has been we always abide by what the state athletic commission uh, requires us to do. And um, like Chell said, you know, we, we live and promote in a state that uh, uh, we do a lot of fights in California, and, and Andy Foster is a tough, tough regulator, and we go by his rules. And, and honestly, it's like when, you know, hiring an independent company, uh, my position has always been, you know, I, I'm not sure if that really works because, uh, in my opinion, unless it's a federal, a federal agency that's regulating uh, testing, um, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure it's going to work. Okay, so I just wanted to ask you about the sort of genesis of this deal. Shell just said he wasn't under contract when he signed it, and it, the deal came together very quickly. When did you guys first start talking? I mean, honestly, um, you know, this deal came together in the last two or three days. 
and uh, I got a call saying that he was available. Were we interested? And uh, three calls later, you know, we had a deal and contracts were flying around, and uh, we got it inked, and and uh, we're super pumped. So, so Chael, did you have an intention of fighting for the UFC when you completed your suspension and you entered the USADA testing pool? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think, uh, you know, the, the first thing I had to do was to get to pass the regulation. It, it used to be a rubber stamp up or down. It's not now. Now, there's a testing pool. Uh, it's, it's multiple months. It's mul- there, there's things you have to do. And then particularly when you're in my spot, when you are suspended, if you're just retired, it's different. If you're suspended and retired, you, it, it's, it's not as easy as just going, hey, put me in coach. So um, physically, I was getting ready to do it. Mentally, I hadn't made the decision. And a lot of that was just self-preservation. I didn't want to have to deal with the letdown. If, if I couldn't do it or I couldn't come back, and that goes in the gym too, right? Your coaches are watching, and there's only a few things that you can monitor. You can monitor your, your, your runs, how fast can I do a mile, how fast can I do three miles. You can monitor uh, your reps on the weights, but the actual intangibles, which is the sparring and the competing with somebody, I've been missing that. That, that part hasn't, that hasn't been there. So, you know, I feel like I'm ready. I was getting ready um, when I went to the Asada pool. Yeah, I think that's that's fair the way you said it. I, I was thinking about the UFC. Uh, uh, I think that's fair. Your next question comes from the line of Alex Lee. Your line is live. Hi, Chell. I just wanted to ask, uh, you know, I know you've been doing broadcasting with uh, World Series of Fighting. Uh, are you going to have any broadcasting opportunities with Bellator, or does that conflict with, obviously, the work you've already been doing? I want to participate with Bellator as much as I can, as much as I can. There is literally a show tonight. I'm not doing a plug just because I like Czech Congo. I am pissed off I'm not on this card. I tried to get a plane ticket and get to Texas yesterday so I could be there for it. If I can participate in any way, I like to be involved. If I can commentate, awesome. If I can do in-ring stuff, great. If I can get in there and fight, great. I, I've thought about that. Like, hey, someday do I want to be a referee? Do I want to get into judge? I just want to be involved. So if there's an opportunity and I and I can go and call a fight, no problem. Give me the date and I'll be there. But for right now, my focus is is fighting, and it's got, it's not as easy as I'm making it sound right now. I got a lot of work to do. I can come on here and talk tough all I want. I can talk about Tito and all these other. Believe me, Tito's thinking about me right now too. He's in the gym while I'm on this call. So I've got plenty of work to do right now. But to your question, I love to participate. That that would be uh, uh I, I'd be thrilled to do that. Hey, thanks, Chell. And uh, this is for Scott. Scott, now that you've acquired a, a fighter who's been a proven pay-per-view draw, uh, is there any thought of putting together another pay-per-view in the near future? Well, you know, traditionally we've been a free product on Spike TV. I think that's going to continue. And, um, you know, but um, at some point, you know, uh, if if uh, Spike and, and uh, the executives there at the network and Viacom want to get back into the pay-per-view business, I mean, it's really going to be a uh, – you know, a, a sit down with everybody and, and decide. But right now, you know, we're a free TV uh, on Spike uh, product. Okay, thanks, gentlemen. Your next question comes from the line of Dave Diver. Your line is live, sir. Hi, guys. Uh, thanks for the time. Uh, Chael, um, it's been, boy, going back to 2008, since you fought for a promotion other than uh, other than UFC, um, it, was there any part of you that you know really identified as you know UFC fighter, Chael Sonnen, as opposed to yeah. you know mixed martial artist? And will it will it feel you know maybe a little uh, a little unusual you know making the yeah, walk man. Uh, under yeah. Yeah, I, that, that's fair. I, I, I love the UFC, but, you know, I love MMA. It's like when I was a boxing fan, and other people have used this example, but I, I think it's really accurate. Well, they'll say, well, what what, uh, what championship did Muhammad Ali win? And everybody will go, well, the heavyweight championship. They go, well, no, 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 it's the IBF, the WBO, the WBA, the WBC. I'm a fight fan. I like, to, I like to fight. Now, the way that we're structured, they're not doing a whole bunch of co-promotes, right? Coker's got stuff going. It's going on with Japan, but but he's the one that's changing this and going, hey, you want to do a co-promote? Let's do it. The way we've really got MMA structured for 99.9% of it, you got to pick your organization. That's just the way that it is. So, uh, yeah, sure, man. I was proud to be a, a UFC fighter. I'm extremely proud to be a Bellator fighter. I can't wait to do it. The Ken Shamrock example I gave earlier, that was true. When, when, when Ken hit that stage and, and Hawk – 
or, or I apologize, Animal from Road Warriors music comes on, and he, it was it, it was amazing. It was this moment where I go, I'm going to do that. I'm a, I'm going to be that guy. I check their ratings the next day. I, I get competitive in other ways than just in the ring. I, I want the highest rating. I want the biggest pay-per-view numbers. I want to move more T-shirts and more tickets than anybody else. I look at those numbers. And uh, I had all of those records. I retired. When I reti- I got beat. All those records are gone now. I used to have the North American Gate. I used to have uh, the pay-per-view. Uh, we were on FS1. I had the FS. I had them all. I've lost them all, and I'm here to get them all back. Um, how uh, all how, all how of them. numbers is... <laughs> do not lie. I'm taking them all back. Um, uh, how important is it for, uh, you know, you see guys, um, making jumps, you know, whether it's, uh, Will Brooks going one way, Rory, Phil Benson coming the other way, how important is it for there to be two, you know, maybe more viable options, you know, as a guy looking to get, you know, get, get paid and make a career of it the best you can, how important are more than, uh, one or two or three, um, viable options as a fighter? Well, and you know that's just a basic law of business. There's there's no way around that. That that doesn't make you loyal to one or disloyal to to the other company. That is true. That that capitalism drives things, and it's got to have competition. That's 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 just an accurate statement by you. And yeah, I love the musical chairs, man. I'm a huge Will Brooks fan. I'm not pissed off at Brooks because he left Bellator, went to the UFC. I like watching Will Brooks. Uh, same thing goes with Rory McDonald, man. If Rory McDonald's in there, I'm watching. It's as it's as simple as that. And one thing we found, I, I can just tell you, from being with the UFC, when this whole thing first started, we thought we were going to have to fight with boxing fans and fight with wrestling fans. That's what we thought. Everybody's going to have to draw a line. This is Chevy and Ford. This is Coke and Pepsi. And what we found out over time is that we were wrong, that it's the same fans. The fans that are tuning into WrestleMania are tuning in to watch Chet Congo and Johnson fight each other tonight. It's the same fans. And, uh, you know, there, there's, there's major truth to that. When you're in the industry, you're, you're, you're true to your brand, right? I run everybody watches Bellator. But behind the scenes, when nobody's looking, I'm buying the pay-per-views too. I'm clicking on – if there's somebody fighting, I'm watching, man. It doesn't have to be glory. It, it can be a WBO event. I don't care what it is. Publicly, it's got to be glory. It's got to be Bellator. But, man, that, that really isn't true. Behind the scenes, I'm a fan. I can tell you over at ESPN, I was out there covering – uh, UFC. So we would sit down in our own room. We got King Mo versus Phil Davis on one TV. We got Klitschko boxing somebody on another TV, and we and we got the pay per view on another one. It's, it's the perfect setting. It's but that's what real fans want to do. There there's there's not enough for me. For me, there's not enough. I'm a junkie, but there's not enough. Your next question comes from the line of Sean Alshidi. Your line is live. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the time today. Uh, first of all, congratulations, Chael, on the deal. Um, you know, you mentioned earlier that this won't affect your role as a commentator with World Series of Fighting. I was wondering on that same note, uh, I know you do UFC coverage for ESPN. Is this going to affect that as well? No. I, so I cover for, just to be specific on this, for ESPN at MMA, we will cover anybody, and they do big fights, though. Uh, for example, just by Bellator, we had Kimbo Slice on, uh, just to throw one name out. I know that because I was there. Um, but, no, if there's, a, if there's a big fight, ESPN will have a presence. Uh, but the UFC has dominated that. They've, they've, they've done a really good job putting on some good matches, so uh, so good for them. But, no, that, that won't change. I was on the phone with ESPN today. Uh, I'm getting ready to go on Sports Center uh, either tonight or tomorrow with uh, Jonathan uh, Coachman and, and Max, and uh, to, to talk Bellator. So, no, ESPN's commitment is not uh, to the UFC. It's just to MMA. Excellent, excellent. Well, I, I know you mentioned earlier that, you know, you, you did a little bit of back and forth with USADA and taking those tests. I wonder, I mean, how much of a role, if any, did their involvement play at all in you deciding to look elsewhere outside of the UFC? It didn't have anything to do with it. Now, if, if I would have got flagged by USADA, Coker's not talking to me either, and I get it. I would be toxic. I, I, I don't like those things I did. They embarrass me. I steer into it sometime with, well, ah, basically, and all that kind of stuff. The truth is, man, that stuff embarrasses me. It, it was a different a different world with different times and different – it just was. you got to change with those times or you're outside of the line. And I was outside of the line. I should have been suspended. I was. I did my time. But I can tell you I'm not going back. And uh, Scott had said earlier that he, he didn't really want to talk about the contract. So. I'm hesitant to offer this 
but allow me to anyway. If I was to fail a test under my Bellator contract, it will cost me 100% of my purse and $500,000. That is in writing. Now, I understand for you guys, that's not as good as a clean test, but, boy, that's got to mean something. If you think I didn't read that part of it before I signed it, I did. Wow. So was that a caveat that Bellator insisted upon putting in there to sign you? Was that question for me or to, to Scott? I thought you said to Scott, but I'll answer. Man, I have no idea. All I know is when I don't know if that was unique to me or if that was boilerplate and everybody's got. I don't know, but I saw that. That's before you deal with your commission issues and everything else. But uh, it was right off the top. Full purse, five hundred grand. The, that's be, that's just too Bellator. That's before we start dealing with commission. So, and, and again, I don't know if that was boilerplate or if they set that aside for me, but. I'm on the other side of the tracks now. And I still look. You wouldn't believe it if you saw. I've still got the biggest arms in the business. Your next question comes from the line of Mike Dice. Your line is live. Hey, so Rory McDonald said that he felt like the UFC stifled fighters' individuality and that everything looks the same. And when you were coming back and considering the UFC and Bellator, did that factor in at all? It, it did it for me. Um, I didn't get into all that stuff, man. There, there was some guys upset about uh, the fight kits and this other stuff. I missed it. I was gone be- right before that all happened. And, uh, man, I, I get it. They, not everybody has to have my mentality. Not everybody wants to ju- – it's just a competitor at heart, and, and that's the end of it. And those guys aren't wrong. But this is the side of the fence that I sit on. Man, you, the, you, we are not drafted. Nobody has to be here. This is a volunteer army. You either want to compete or you don't. I love the Olympics, right? It's, the Olympics just got over, but I love them. And I largely love them because of the purity, and I also love the architecture of a, of a blind drop racket. You put guys in there, and whoever advances, advances, and you take on the next, the next team or player, whatever the situation might be. And I love that purity. Nobody has to get begged. There's never been an Olympics in the history of the games where somebody's sitting around in their living room with their buddies and a guy's getting a gold medal. He goes, well, you know, I could have done that. I, I just sat this Olympics out. It's never happened. The right guy steps forward every single time. And two and three and five and seven and nine. No, sometimes it's not always the right guy. The number one guy always steps forward in every event, in every situation, in every office, every single time. So you either want to be here or you don't. It's, it's as simple as that. And I get Rory's point. He's not wrong to make it, but it's not mine. My point is, do you want to compete or not? And uh, you said you were on a legend's ass-kicking tour, and the hot topic amongst fighters these days is pursuing titles and two weight classes at the same time. Is that on your radar at all? Absolutely. I like those guys that do that, man. That goes back to the willingness that I'm talking about. The right guy steps forward. You can be the guy, but you're in a different weight class than fix the weight class and get the fight done. You know, I bring up the legend because Bellator's got so damn many of them. Uh, they got more champions. They got Hall of Famers. They, they got record-setting guys that are over there. So I mentioned that, but I know I'm looking at Liam and all these guys. Uh, you know, people. Ask, some, I did an interview this morning. Somebody was asking me about Liam, and and want me to bag on him. It's like, look, I will fight Liam any time, and I will work my way to him. But I'm on board. I think the guy's excellent. I think that that he came up the hard way. I think that he's underrated. I think that the fans underappreciate him. I think that's going to change. And, and if he's in my weight class, he's not any different than Tito or anybody else. I'm going to come out and fight as hard as I can. And when time runs out, someone's going to get their hand raised. But I'm going to fight them all as, as hard as I, I, I possibly can. Thanks, Joe. Your next question comes from the line of Josh Gross. Your line is live, sir. Uh, hey, guys, how are you doing? Congratulations up, on the deal, Chael. Thanks, buddy. Um, hey, Scott. Um, how do you go, Chael, from intending to fight with the UFC, putting your name into the USADA pool, and calling Scott Coker and getting this deal done in, in three days? What, what happened in that time period to make you want to have that conversation with Scott? Well, I mean, I guess, I guess you'd call it a paperwork issue. You, you're, you're either under contract or you're not. Um, and I wasn't. I, I was going through the process. I never even thought of calling Scott. Somebody's mentioned World Series a couple of times. Ryzen's got something going. Something's coming up in Chechnya that I read about, at least allegedly coming up. 
I never even thought to do it. It, it was kind of Pavlov's dog, man. I was I was fighting in the UFC, and that was it. And uh, I didn't really think any different. And, and then I thought, you know, maybe now is the time. Maybe now is the time that that, that I get the big backdrop and get to make the walk. And uh, you know, I love again. I love fighting in California. I'm like, you you can see I'm positioning for a California fight, but maybe this is the time, man. Maybe this is the opportunity. Uh, I got Scott's number in my phone. Maybe it's maybe it's worth just calling him and, and seeing where at. And, and that was really it. I mean, literally, the deal was put together in, in three phone calls and text messages. It was done. All right, let's do this. How many of this do you want? When can you be ready, man? I'm ready now. That's that's how quick I can be ready. Well, what weight class? Whatever weight class you want, you don't have to bring the scale out. However, however you want to do it, I won't I won't create any roadblocks for you. I just want you to know I want to compete. And I become a top guy instantly on the simple fact that I will show up. Did Did your contract uh, fulfill its terms, or did you seek your release from the UFC? So I uh, I believe I well I I definitely had a release. Is it because of, you got to understand? I got to go back two to three years. I haven't been in there since uh, since 2013, and when my storm first hit, uh, I believe I was released right. Excuse me, excuse me, Josh. I believe I was uh, released right then, but if you're asking when the actual paperwork came, I don't know. Okay, so so for the last few years, you felt like you were not under contract to the UFC, and then when you were free to compete, if your suspensions were over, you could go off and talk to anybody you wanted. That was your impression the entire time? Yeah, and I always thought, I'll, I'll just go back to the UFC. I, I really never thought twice about it. I watched the other shows, and I had an opportunity to box Roy. I had this really weird opportunity to box Roy Jones Jr. on a rooftop in Abu Dhabi. and uh, But I, I had a suspension with Nevada. I told Nevada I wouldn't do anything for two years. It just it was just an area. I just didn't want to go down. I just passed. And I think about it all the time. I'm a big Roy fan. I'd have loved to gun in there with Roy's ass. And uh, I got a little off guard on what your question was, Josh, because I started rambling there. But, yeah, the bottom line was I thought I would go back to the UFC. I, I just thought it would be that way. That I got in my head. I go, well, no, not necessarily. Let's make a phone call. Did you give um, Did you give the UFC, like, a, a big opportunity to sign you? I mean, beyond sort of your initial foray into the USADA pool, did you, did you have conversations that went down the track on that sort of thing? Uh, yeah, there was a little bit of that, but I didn't do it personally. Um, yeah, I, I just assumed I would go back to the USC. I was starting to get my weight down. I was starting to look at 185. I thought about maybe, uh, you know, George was talking about coming back. I was thinking, I was, you have these different thoughts, but that was the track that I was going down. Uh, definitely was the UFC. It had nothing to do with new ownership or anything like that. It, it just had a, to do with, look, you can, you, you can only sign at one place, you know, unfortunately, but that's where the sport's at. People have their own promotions, their own networks, their own channel. One's in the pay-per-view business. One is in uh, the television and the rating business. It's it's a it's it's different models. You you you, you got to pick where you got to pick which one you're going to go with. That's where we're at. Next question comes from the line of Gary Abbott. Mr. Abbott, your line is live. Yeah, H L Gary Abbott with USA Wrestling. Um, the Gary Abbott. What's happening, man? Hey, I, I saw you were having a press conference. I wanted to listen. So, got a question though. Um, as a wrestler, could you tell me your thoughts about Bellator signings of a, a ton of elite wrestlers out of college and international wrestling in the last couple of years? Yeah, I love it. So you saw Joey Davis have success, right? You, we go back. You got Joe Warren in there. You got King Mo, Phil Davis. Uh, I, I'll tell you one right now that I'm I, I'm attached to this, so I'm coming with some biasness. But Tyrell Fortune. Is coming. He's coming soon. Uh, I want on the same card with him if I can, just because I, I want to be there when he's in the back. We came through the same wrestling club. We were workout partners. Um, this guy, is a, I thought he would be our Olympian this year. Uh, that was an uphill battle in that weight class with Gwiz and uh, Travel and Ray and all. But I thought that he was going to come through. And uh, yeah, I I love it, but but in front of everybody else, I'm I'm putting Tyrell. Ty, Tyrell is he he's going to be a problem. He's going to be a problem up and down the board, and people better get used to that name. So as a wrestler, though, you guys take pride in your success in MMA. I I kind of <laughs> ask a lot of guys that they wrestled, and I'm curious if you could give a little perspective of uh, how your background in wrestling 
all styles of wrestling translated to the MMA? Yeah, with with wrestling, you know, it, it used to be techniques. We used to have some techniques where we could put guys in position uh, in an MMA competition and have good luck, and then pretty soon everybody started learning some wrestling. It got, it got harder and harder, but the mindset and the grit and the grind, above everything else, the grind you go through from the, the cutting of the weight to the two-a-days to, to needing to do something, even when you don't feel good, even when you feel like, not doing and that that comes back to what I'm talking about with negotiations too. I mean I, I am legitimately pissed off as a fan when I have to sit and read about guys will only do this for X amount of money and everybody needs to be bribed and they need this big carrot dangled in front of their face. It comes back to the Olympic scare. It comes back to the Cadet World Championships that I've been up every morning at one o'clock watching on Flow Wrestling. It comes to do you want to do it or not? And the right guy, the best guy every time says yes. And three and four and five uh, can go and do all these pity parties and come up with all these reasons why they don't want to jump in the fire. I'm not one of those guys. I want to do it. Thanks a lot, man. Good luck with this. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Good to talk to you, though. Your next question comes from the line of Sean Ross Seth. Your line is live, sir. Hey, Chael, have you had any sort of feedback from Dana White or anybody within the UFC over this signing? Uh, no, I got, you know, I got some congratulations. You got to understand too, the UFC employees, they're fight fans. They're like me, right? We're junkies. Sometimes we get so close to the trees, you can't see the forest. So nobody gets upset. They, people just want to see fights. And then if you're with a company, you need to stand with your brand. I stand with Bellator, period. But privately, when no one's looking, right? I work for Coca-Cola, but privately I'm drinking a Pepsi, right? It doesn't matter. It's the same thing to me. Publicly, I got to defend Coker. I got to defend my boss. I got to defend my network, Spike TV. I got to do all those things. But privately, we're fans, and so they, the US, the people that work at the USC, love the industry so much that they work in the industry. Yeah, they're you know they've said a lot of really nice things and and, and a lot of congratulations. Can't wait to see it. Do you know the day? Boy, I, I hope you and Tito come. Yeah, I'm getting that positive feedback, and that's yeah, that's nice to hear. But you know, publicly. We'll make our stand. I will stand with Bellator. Comes from the line of Brett Okamoto. Your line is live. Hey, Chael. How are you? Thanks for the time today. What's up, Brett? Yeah, buddy. Hey, just uh, just one question for you. You know, you've mentioned that uh, this isn't about money. In fact, it's it's angered you that the sport has become about money a little bit. But that said, you also told Associated Press something to the effect of there were a lot of zeros in this deal, zero apostrophe s. So I'm wondering, coming off of two years of inactivity, I mean, obviously you were never far from the spotlight, but what did you find your value was at? Could this be the most lucrative deal of your fighting career up until this point? Yeah, this was a deal that I saw. That is that, true, but it's not about the Here's the hardest question I get asked, Brett, and it's the most basic. Question. I don't have an answer. I don't answer. I want to fight. Got hey, guys want to fight. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, you were breaking up. Do you mind repeating that part? Yeah, but I was just saying one of the most trivial questions I get asked is simply why Bellator, and I understand that that's a base. It's got to be asked, but it's one that I struggle with because I don't have a great answer. I'm sitting there going, listen, I love the production. I love the fire. And they got these fights. They got... I don't have a great answer. So when when the guy asked me, yeah, I told him zero apostrophe S. Yes, but the... I don't want to think about it. I'm already rich. People tell you money makes you happy. I got $10 million, and I can tell you it's not true. I'm not any happier now than I was when I had $9 million. It's the same thing. I just want to compete. Gotcha. Thanks, Jill. Appreciate it. Thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Justin Golightly. Your line is live. Hey, Chell, thanks for the time. Yep. You know, I know you. I know you mentioned Ortiz's first, but listen, are are you going to have to chase down Vanderlei Silva all the way to Japan and finish this Great A American Beef? Or you think he's going to stay in uh, May sometime next year, and you can throw down in a classy Indian casino? I'm going to find that son of a bitch wherever he goes. I can tell you, this one case, the only thing that Vandal and I see that he's going to find. Okay. Which is, I want to that guy he's not is a That's one of the compliments. I'm, I, Silva, I had a contract to fight Vandalay Silva. I will definitely be fighting Vandalay Silva in 
in Bellator. I don't know if Coker knows that or not. Vandalay and I are going to find each other. I'm telling you, Coker might be, he's going to be the promoter. He might be the last one to find this out. I assure you, Vandalay and I will find each other, and a lot sooner than you think. Those seem to be the uh, the most possible matchups, but, you know, the fans are always going to speculate. Um, my last question here, of course, is uh, you already fought one of the greatest of all time candidates. What would it mean to you for the chance to put a Westland, Oregon beatdown on Fedor and what could be Bellator's Rocky Four? Yeah, I got no problem with the Fedor fight. I'm not got an experience factor on him. If a commission wants to sanction him, they had a bunch of fights and just the referee wearing an earpiece. I assure you I will show up. Uh, they wear some regular shirts, so I don't have to get that close to the guy. I really don't. Fedor, he was a Shell, we're losing you. Hello. Hello, fellas. Are you there? Yeah, we lost you for a second, but you're back now. Oh, I was on fire. I was on fire. It's too bad you lost it. Where did we leave off? I'm not. I'm not sure about. We probably lost you about 15, 20 seconds ago. All right. I, w- I was just saying. Yeah. If, if Fader wants to come fight, that's fine too. And, and, and he can find his way over there. And I don't accept his fights in Japan as real. And if, he, if he's as good as he thinks people say they are, that he is, that, that it's fine with me, man. I'm not on board with it. He, he's a good, solid guy that had a bunch of fights with no with no commission, with no weigh-ins, with a referee wearing his earpiece, getting instructions from some guy in the back, and that's just what happened. And your last question comes from the line of Jordan Wahlberger. Your line is live. Hey, Chael. Uh, hey, quick question. I know you said that your contract is with kind of with Bellator, with Spike. Does that open up any opportunities for you to kind of cross-promote and jump into Ryzen, uh, kind of like King Mo did before? I don't know how that works. I, all I know is, is as a fan, I, I've never talked to, to the leadership at Bellator and found out how, how that whole thing works. I watched Mo do that. Uh, so I'm going to guess yes. I'm going to guess that they have some kind of a relationship there, but that's purely as a fan from watching Mo do it. I really don't know. Does, does that interest you, jumping in kind of one of those tournaments as well, if, if that's a possibility? I, I love tournaments, particularly if they're in one night. They're harder and harder to see, um, but that's what I grew up on. I grew up on that as a wrestler. Uh, you, you multiple guys in one day. I, lo- I love that whole thing. I know they spread them out sometimes, too, however, however that works. Uh, the closer the plane flight, the better, but if we got to go over to Japan, then we'll go to Japan. All right, Chad. We will miss you in Austin here tonight, but uh, look forward to seeing you on the broadcast. I appreciate it, Jordan. Thanks, buddy. All right, everybody, that wraps up today's call. I really appreciate you all coming on. Have a good day. Kaboom. This concludes this afternoon's teleconference. You may now disconnect your lines.